it's a unit that the Army habitually has called upon. And in fact, throughout the brigade's history, that has proven to be the case. On June 25, 2013, the soldiers of the 4th Striker Brigade Combat Team, 2nd Infantry Division, were notified they would be part of the upcoming force reduction and scheduled for inactivation. For me, that was, uh, you know, a bittersweet moment. I certainly was proud and honored to be selected to command the brigade uh, as it, you know, went through the inactivation process. Um, but also, it, it's, uh, you know, painful. So it's very sad to see something that I helped to build and grow and deployed with, you know, uh, case the colors and, and move into history. Join us as we take a look back on the history of the 4th Striker Brigade Combat Team, the Raider Brigade. The 4th Striker Brigade's 2nd Infantry Division, commonly known as 4-2, was reflagged from the 2nd Striker Cavalry Regiment, which had transferred to Fort Lewis, Washington in 2005. The Cavalry Regiment would continue on to Germany, while the newly formed 4-2 prepared for their first deployment. It was here initially when we were uh, two SCR and reflagged, so I was here for the reflagging. At the time I was a major and was the battalion XO for 3-2 SCR, who then became 138. I got here as a private and I think it was like three or four months after I got here that we actually did the change of colors. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I. I still have my PDUs with the 2CR patch. In April 2007, the Raider Brigade headed to Iraq in what would be later known as the Surge. The brigade, just like many uh, brigades at the time, was completely task organized. For at least half of it, you know, the brigade was split out across numerous different uh, battle space and fobs. So even though we were a striker unit, we executed numerous air assault raids across the battle space, killed or captured over 200 high value targets. Uh, and those were, that, those were impressive. But success came at a high cost. The brigade's first deployment was its most devastating. 55 soldiers lost their lives in the first deployment alone. Yeah, that first deployment was... It took a lot of lives. Now did they do. After completing their mission and returning home, 4-2 began a reset period that only lasted six months. Because on March 1, 2009, the brigade was formally notified that it would be accelerated and again deployed to Iraq in the fall of the same year. Uh, the second deployment was much different. Uh, that was more a partnership-focused deployment, um, turning things back over to the Iraqi people, the key infrastructure, the security, the missions, and things like that, putting them back in the lead. Once again, the soldiers of 4-2 intensified training, where the brigade played a key role in the Iraqi elections of 2010. When we went out on mission, you could actually see some of the billboards for the politicians with, you know, this person was running. <laughs> it was on this deployment that the 4th Striker Brigade Combat Team, 2nd Infantry Division, embarked on one of the most defining moments in the unit's history. A 360-mile tactical road march from Baghdad to Kuwait, known as the Last Patrol. Uh, I'm pretty honored to be part of the last, uh, last uh, combat brigade. 
know, and additionally, to be one of the guys fortunate enough to be on this mission, to, uh, to be on the last patrol, because it's something that, you know, the, maybe not everyone will remember, but the Army will remember, you know, they remember a lot of specific events, and this is one they'll remember. They'll remember that 4th Brigade, 2nd Infantry Division, drove their strikers out of Iraq. The soldiers and their 360 vehicles were part of a symbolic end of Operation Iraqi Freedom and the beginning of Operation New Dawn in September 2010. You know, aside from it being the last patrol, you know, we know we're going home. That, that is a huge morale booster. It was 18 months before the Raiders were called to deploy once more. The brigade conducted rigorous pre-deployment exercises to prepare them for the upcoming mission. But this time, they were headed to Afghanistan in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. The overall mission, it was kind of a combination, I guess, of our first and second deployments to Iraq. Um, we were there to, to stabilize the province of Kandahar, known as the birthplace of the Taliban, while simultaneously working with the Afghanistan partners, um, you know, ensuring they could take the lead for security in the province and uh, be able to, to maintain the offensive, you know, with the Taliban. They accomplished all this while simultaneously closing 15 locations of tactical groundwork in their area. While their comrades served overseas, roughly half of the brigade remained at Joint Base lewis mccord as the Raider Ready Reserve, a force capable of reinforcing or replacing deployed service members if needed. After nine months and following its transfer of authority with the 2nd Striker Cavalry Regiment, the Raider Brigade formally uncased its colors on September 11, 2013 on Joint Base lewis mccord Four days later, the City of Lakewood, their community connector, hosted a welcome home parade for the soldiers of the brigade and their family members. On June 25, 2013, 4-2 received notification that it will be among the 12 Brigade combat teams to inactivate over the next five years. In response, the Raider Brigade conducted massive logistical operations, moving thousands of pieces of equipment and personnel. In March 2014, the battalions of the Raider Brigade would re-flag as the 1st Striker Brigade Combat Team, 4th Infantry Division located on Fort Carson, Colorado as the brigade formally inactivated on Joint Base lewis McCord. The brigade has worked so hard for the legacy that it has, and the soldiers have, have put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into making the unit what it is today, and um, it's just, it's sad to see it go away. It's a unit I won't soon forget, that's for sure, and, and something I'll always remember and take with me. Throughout the deployments, I've experienced every aspect of my job, and, you know, whether it was good leadership or bad, it's it's molded me into the leader I am now because you, know, you need those bad experiences to know what not to do. Just like you need those good leaders to know what footsteps to follow. And 4-2 has provided that. When they leave the brigade and go back out to the army, every single soldier who ever served in this brigade is now a Raider DNA uh, that is going to change and modify and make better any unit to which they're associated with. So that is truly our legacy. The Raider soldier uh, is making the Army better no matter where they are.